so like this light skinned dude got me me and his roommate and like when I first met her like I want to say like the initial was kind of like I was like whoa she is mad beautiful oh my tumblr is marshmallow.com I'm gonna put a link in the social stream allow link Cheer, cheer, cheer. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. So, like, the initial was, like, I thought, like, she was, like, mad beautiful. And I was just, like, wow. Like, she seems really cool. And I was just kind of, like, I hope she likes me. Because I really like this dude. In ways. I think I just, like, finally met a man of color that I was, like, attracted to in Denver. That was, like, fucking seemingly like fucking cool like seemingly cool um but quickly rec realized and honestly just realized that he wasn't like really cool um but it was a situation where like when I first met his roommate I thought that like she was cool as fuck so like me and her started kicking it OD hard and within us kicking it for like two weeks she was on some shit like bitch you should just move in and I was like what and she was just like really and I was like I think you should talk to homie about this cause I don't want it to seem like I'm on some shit like I need to move into your house cause like I wasn't in that place I was in the space where I was like it would be dope to move into this spot cause it was pretty nice upon me first really getting the vibe of it I didn't really like inspect the whole house but I was like you know it could get cleaned up a little bit it could it can look a little different you know we could change the vibe you know I, I like to think of myself as a creative so I was like I'm sure I could like finagle something DIY Pinterest some shit and so <clears throat> I had so like she's telling me that she spoke to him and all this shit and then we spoke about it him and I and like there was like a consensus I suppose and like the thing is there's the honeymoon phase and then there's the like we live together phase like in any relationship and once you're like living with someone it's like things are like not the same as before it's kind of like before I lived with them and I was just like sleeping over a lot it's like I would wake up I'd be like hey I was like give me some bus money so I can get to work and then I was like on my way home I'll buy I'll bring you lunch and that was our little cute little setup where it's like I would get bus money and then I would just get all my tips or whatever by the end of my shit and I would have money and I'd be like word here's a sandwich for your lunch because I would get home right when he was going to work so it was just perfect and we're like ships of the night you know what I mean we'd, ki we'd kick it in the evening and it was chill but once I was like officially living there for sure for sure things just kind of change because like before I started living there me and him were sharing a bed and like he wasn't really bringing anybody to the house and I had only seen like friends of his come over um in the times that like we were dating but like we only like hooked up officially like one time like after we started like living together and then it was just kind of like not really syncing up and like it was just like two it was like on some death cab shit like two brothers in a hotel bed my nigga like just back to back like I was just like mm, and like he was just like freaking me out I was just kind of just like oh my god I was just feeling mad weird like the vibes was just awkward um and meanwhile me and his roommate are just getting along fabulously I mean like me and her are just like killing it like we're just like traveling together smoking together eating together laughing just just doing a lot of cool stuff and the whole time like I'm thinking like wow you know and the thing is I'm just very open with people so I would just tell people how I feel because it's like I don't know I guess like I've internalized Aerosmith like I don't want to miss a thing like I just want to like be real like with people in the moment if I'm feeling it you know what I mean if in the moment I'm just like damn I'm glad we met I want to say that shit I want to keep it aside because it's like I don't want it to be something I thought before some shit happened like I want to keep my friends in the know of how I'm feeling and so I was trying to keep it real and I was letting her know like you know I would be really sad if like we weren't cool like I really enjoy your company like I just thought she was really like a cool person um and really fun to be around um but with that being said like 
I don't know, just like one day we had like a fight because like she got upset about something I said about white people. Like she just like popped off and said some crazy ass like racist shit and I was just like I couldn't even like understand like where she was coming from. Like she was on some shit basically being like trying to say something about me talking about white people or whatever and I was kinda just like and I just felt like alienated, like kinda like what? And so I don't know and like from that moment I kind of was like damn like there's just some shit I can't say to her and so I was still like super in like friend crush mode where I just like was like so happy that we were friends and like getting along and doing fun stuff but I felt like I had understood the stakes not to mention the fact that like I'm living with this person so it's like now I've outed myself as like someone who is like unapologetic about like critiquing whiteness fucking saying shit that's like anti-white I guess um and just like just being someone who's just like fucking open about like racism and shit and like I'm like paying this person rent like at first it was some some shit where she was like I'm not gonna charge you any money but then it was like well you could pay me this amount of money and I was like alright then and so um I was like weird and it's like you know like when you live with it was just like a whole wild setup honestly like once I like really break it down because it was like I, it's just like when you live with somebody and you're paying them a random amount of rent like you end up like paying for a bunch of other random shit because you feel bad that you're not like paying all the rent and all this shit and I'm just kind of like what the fuck like I just felt like I was doing so much and like the dude who I was like hooking up with like he like once I had my bed like bitch once I got my bed this nigga started bringing home basic after basic or white bitch and I'm saying like the Eliza Thornberry of white bitches like just looking fucking honestly just like moment of silence cause that shit is just out of control but I was just like I just was like, okay, and the thing that killed me was like, they would be trying to talk to me, and I remember one of them was like, hi, my name's Caitlin, and I was like, I just smiled at her, like, she just like popped up on me, like, she actually walked into the bathroom without knocking, and I'm like, but bitch, do you live here? You don't be walking in no damn lit up bathroom at 2 o'clock in the fucking morning where someone's trying to take a fucking stressful ass poop. I'll never forget that day. It was terrible. I was, in, I was just Taco Bell overnight, woke up, cold sweat, knew what had to happen. Went in the bathroom, next thing I know, a white bitch popped up on me while I'm taking a fucking, a fucking legendary doo-doo. And I'm just kind of like, really, bitch? Can I have no rest? Like, I was like, white people popping up during the doo-doo, like, come on. And then when I come out the bathroom, she want to shake my hand. And I'm like, bitch, no. Like, I don't shake people's hands at 2 o'clock in the morning after I take a doo-doo. Like, that's not what I'm doing. I'm going back the fuck to sleep. I don't need to know you. So I just, like, walk past her. I, like, smile at her. I, like, walk by. And then, like, I don't even know. Like, the, my roommate was like, oh, like, did you see Caitlyn? And I was like, yes. And I told her. Uh, and I was like, I don't know why she introduced herself to me. And then, like, this bitch started laughing. But then she was start trying to dial it back. And that was one of the things that I, like, didn't fuck with in my house. Is, like, the white passing black dude who was in my home was just, like, I, don't, I, I can't even put it all on him. I can't even put it all on him. Because she was on some shit where she told me at one point that his mom had contacted her for an event so I feel like it was like some capitalist elitist like just some fucking strategic ass shit where like she never wanted to irk him though he was doing the shadiest shit and the thing is we had the same birthday and like our zodiac all of our planets were matching which I think is crazy I was like ah you know what I mean and I didn't know that um I didn't know I didn't know that until after we fucked and I was like I, I was like, yo, I usually ask. He's like, me too. And I was like, that's weird. That was like so weird. Like, we were talking so much. I like, never even asked each other, like, what our birthdays were or whatever. 
but we both knew we were Capricorns or whatever, but we were the same day, same planets, everything, it was out of control, but the thing is, like, he was a dude, you know what I mean, he was a dude who was, like, white passing as fuck, or ambiguously racial, I guess, to people of color, so people, I feel like he was trying to tell me people of color knew he was a person of color, but, like, white folks stayed thinking he was, like, either Latina or white, um, or, la or, or like, some sort of, um, Italian or something, I was like, nigga, you know white-skinned people always talking about you know us light skinned people. Let's be real. Anyways, um <laughs> this nigga, like, I don't even know. Um I'm trying to get back to it. She would always pander to him though. Like I just noticed like a lot of times like she would just like take his side for shit. Like even when he was dead the fuck wrong or or if he did something crazy. Like she would always accuse me of doing some shit and like never check in with him and then find out after the fucking fact and then be on some shit like, mm, well, you know what I mean? Uh, and, like, she just, like, really... She just never wanted to confront him. And she would tell me stuff, like... She was telling me, oh, like... You know, his name is on the electric bill. And so I checked it. And it said that we owed, like, 500 something dollars. And he's only been paying the minimum. Even though I've been giving him $100 at least every month. And I'm like, bruh. And he works for the airlines and shit. He was always in Vegas. Always just dipping the fuck out. And I was like, wow. I was like, that's crazy. And I was like, would this be what I would be like if I was a man? And I was, like, fucking, like, uneducated in terms of politics. Because, like, I didn't need to be. Because, like, my life was obviously, like, I didn't need any more. I didn't need anybody to tell me about anything about no struggle I ain't struggling like I'm living good you know what I mean like this like this dude was just like the epitome of like just assimilation like and it made me fucking sick like I wanted to fucking slap the shit out of him so many times I thought about it but tell me why you know I'm gonna tell you this one of his exes uh, one of his exes uh, sisters punched the shit out of him one night uh, when he was out clubbing and shit and I heard about it through his roommate our roommate or whatever and I was dying laughing I, I pretended though cause I knew she was gonna try to there was just a point where, like, they were just, like, uh, in cahoots. Like, there were, like, points where, like, it was me and her chilling hard and, like, knowing he was a fuck-ass nigga. And then, like, him, like, and her, him, like, reaching out to her because, like, she held him in a, such a high esteem. And he knew that, that he would every once in a while, like, reach out to her, like, be like, oh, hey, come drink. Or, oh, oh hey, come, like, hang out with me in my room and watch my TV. You know what I mean? Like, he would reach out to her for, like, little shit. And she would always, like, you know, facilitate with some sort of alcohol or some other shit like that like so it was a situation where like she was doing the most like for his approval I felt like and it went from us like being like super close to like me just feeling like OD and alien OD alienated and like OD like not wanting to be friends with her anymore like after me and him, me, his and my relationship went left I feel like I kind of glommed on to her like hoping that like me and her could like still have a relationship while me and him weren't fucking with each other while I was like in ways feeling shady about him because I felt like he just had OD white bitches like in the house like wilding at one point if I want to speak on it, and I am, at one point, there were five white people standing around my bed, bitch. Because I was living in, like, a fucking nook. And they, like, just walked into the fucking house with him after a long night of drinking smoke, like, all types of motherfucking cigarettes and ashes and shit. And want to stay in front of my bed, which is, like, next to the fucking stairwell. And want to just convene and kick it and light cigarettes in front of my fucking bed. And I was on the phone, and I was like, yo, I was like, white people is all around my bed. Like, I was so scared on the phone. I was like, what is happening? I didn't know what they were trying to do. And, um, so then, like, they eventually went upstairs. And I knew, and at this time, like, I knew, like, she was OD, like, steady trying to vent to me about shit that he had done. Because, bitch, messy backstory. And I'm gonna try to keep it quick. Um, the dude that I had fucked and was living with, whatever, he, uh, he had, like, a, he previously had a fiancé. Um, and they were together for, like, two years, and his fiance was fucking, like, apparently, uh, uh, um, she just had, like, an addiction issue with, like, alcohol, and, like, she was just out here just, like, fighting bitches. Like, they were, they were constantly telling me about, or rather, she was constantly telling me stories about how his ex-fiance used to just get into fights for nothing. Um, and she was very, like, uh, into, like, looking sickening and fabulous and wearing, like, the OD flyest weaves and stuff like that and going out, um, being, like, you know, doing call girl shit or whatever. And I was like, that's cool, whatever. Um, but, like, it was obvious to me that, like, she was, like, OD, like, 
uh, like fangirl over like his ex fiance. Um, and he actually orchestrated it for them to all like meet up and like be and like her be their girlfriend. Um, and what ended up happening was the ex fiance ended up just going kind of like left, smashing a bunch of windows in the house, which I witnessed after I had like moved in. I was like, wait, that window smashed. Wait, that is like not a decorative piece of wood. That is a fucking piece of wood over a broken window. Okay. Okay, like I started noticing shit, you know what I mean, after the fucking fact. But, um, they were together on some shit where, like, they were in a poly triad. They started, like, all dating, but the ex fiance, like, attacked, you know, her and him and, like, bust a bunch of windows and shit. And so that kind of made their bond stronger in ways because they decided to move out together and get this, like, really cute apartment. But once they were living together, like, they stopped fucking, and I think, like, when he brought me home, she kind of was just, like, word, like, I fuck with this girl, and, like, we just started being cool, he started feeling slighted, and then, like, that's when he started bringing in white bitches as soon as I had my own bed situation, and, like, that was chill, like, I wasn't, like, OD mad, but I was kind of just, like, really, and so, anyway, so, um, once, her and I were, like, no longer chill, I was kind of, like, how can I keep living here? Like, how can I keep, like, really paying her money? You know what I mean? And me and her stopped being chill mainly because I just felt like, I don't know. I just felt like she was just getting, like, really fucking, like, shady. Um, and she was just getting, like, just, like, she was just irking me. Like, cause I remember, like, I met this, I met up with this one dude and she was, like, OD hitting on him. Like, she was just doing the most, like, giving him mad gifts. Like, she gifted him some tarot cards out of nowhere and she was just on some shit, like, Oh, like, I knew that it was time to, like, give these tarot cards to this person. And I was just like, bitch, you don't even know this nigga. Like, he's my guest. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, she's just, like, popping off. Like, I don't even know. Like, she was just, like, being OD, I kind of felt. And I felt like she was OD lonely. And she was getting in this spirit of, like, being competitive with me. And I just didn't like it because I just felt like we both were two different people, obviously. And it's like, duh. Um, But it's like, I just kind of felt like, I don't know. I felt like what I was trying to say earlier about Denver is like it's dry it's kind of dry like a lot of the black girls there that I met like I'm not gonna say they were all one way or another but it's like it was hard for me to meet black girls period honestly she like my roommate turned out to be like one of the only black girls that I really had a fucking relationship when I was out there with no that's a lie my neighbor I ended up being cool with my neighbor cause like Fran uh Fran bitch I wish I wish we was friends on Facebook I don't I don't think she got a Facebook actually I think she maybe she does I'm gonna try to find her Franchetta I think it's Franchetta Jones I don't know I'm gonna try to find her anyways me and her got really cool real quick cause like I remember one day I was like I don't even know the you know what the spirits work in magnificent ways cause I was high as fuck right tell me why I tried to roll a split and I lost all my lighters and bitch if you a stoner you know you got matte lighters but you can't find them sometimes you just cannot find your lighters it's weird um so I like literally walked outside of my apartment onto the street just to go get a lighter just to light my shit like that's what I was feeling like and I went outside, and when I went outside, I had to go through the lobby, and I ended up letting this woman in because I, like, left one of the doors cl- cracked, like, one of the locked doors, because I didn't have a key, bitch. So, I, like, walk around, and I'm like, yo, you got a lighter? There's, like, three people, and nobody had a lighter. I come back in. The woman who's in the lobby, Fran, is now in the courtyard, just snooping, looking at windows and shit. And I'm just like... I'm like, yo, what up? You know what I mean? I'm trying to, like, see what's good with her. And I was like, actually, do you have a lighter? She's like, I definitely have a lighter. And so then she's like, do you have a blunt wrap? And I was like, I definitely have a blunt wrap. She's like, well, let's go smoke some weed. I was like, worried. So I, me and her went back into the place because, like, she, before all that exchange, that quick-ass exchange, she was on some shit, like, she's trying to live here, trying to find out who the manager is and trying to get the tea. And I was like, well, honestly, bitch, it's actually hot as fuck. So, like, come into my house. Like, let's just, like, fucking drink some water and smoke this shit. So we smoked, we drank, and she's telling me about how like she just been homeless and shit and how she finally got saved up enough money to live somewhere and I was like yes bitch I was like our neighbors just moved out I was like you should try to get this place over here I was like honestly like and she was looking around the our, pla- our apartment and our apartment was actually really nice like I have found out later cause like all the eventually after like living at the condo I started walking by enough times to where I could see inside of people's houses. So they leave their doors open and shit. And, like, our apartment was actually one of the nicer ones. And it was because, like, each condo was, like, privately owned by another person. So a, one individual person can, like, go in there and make the shit look bomb. And then, like, another person will do something and it's not as bomb. Um, and it's the same fucking apartment. It's the same apartment in every fucking way. Um, only, like, 
what you put into it like what you want to get out of it you know what i mean like you hook it up so that you can like charge more i suppose so anyways so when she was looking around our apartment she was bugging because our shit was looking fly um and she ended up getting the apartment next door and i went in there and i was like damn you know, I was like, this shit is not even that fucking fly. But I know she was grateful to have the place, but she was talking shit too. And I was like, bitch, I know. Like, they playing games. Um, but me and her got to be really chill. And it was like, honestly, it was just really lucky that, like, me and her, like, met each other. And, like, we're so cool. And that she lived next door. Because there were times where, like, I had to go next door and be like, can I have a moment here? Because, like, I would just have, like, wild ass, like, conversations with, like, all... Um, what's her name? I have wild ass uh, conversation with this person, and I would just be like, I can't be in my house right now. Like, I need to leave my house. And um, Samantha at one point was just like, Yo, I think like you only are like nice to her because like you're scared of like her kicking you out. And I was like, That's really what it is. And it's like I felt like I had put myself in a position where I had to be like best friends you know RuPaul's best friends race uh with this bitch and like that's not even how I was feeling like I was kind of over her because she was kind of like irking me and making me feel like I couldn't be myself and then like the I would say like the thing that really irked me out of all of it was when I got my when I had my first job working at the fucking coffee coffee shop or whatever um I had her coming through and I was like teaching her how to make like drinks and shit and trying to like hook her up and like show her this little trade you know what I mean being a barista ain't nothing but it's like you can get some good ass tips like if you work by yourself or whatever like and it's really nothing like I think a lot of the service industry like you could be doing a lot of shit and not get no money like I think like working at like a little ass coffee shop like raking in tips I can make some good ass tips sometimes honestly so I was like girl if you want to get your little hustle on make this money and like honestly minimum in like motherfucking uh, Colorado's like nine ten so it's like either way like you're making enough money like you're not like doing too bad um but anyways so I was like teaching her how to fucking do this shit and then when uh I went to my new job I was working for this black man and I knew it was gonna be some dumb shit cause when I went in he was on some shit like what did you he's like did you know I was black from my voice like that's the first thing he asked me when I went into the to the job, and I was like, no, honestly, like not even trying to like be like on some shit where I know people raised from the phone, but I was just like, no, and he was just like, he's like, good, and I was like, okay, like, but my thing is like, I think it was also the thing is like, he told me his name was Sylvester on the phone, and so I thought, I don't know, I don't know what I thought, Sylvester. I don't even know what the fuck I thought. Like, <laughs> I was just like Sylvester. Like, I just didn't see a black man. I don't know. That was fucked up of me. A black man can't be Sylvester. Let me not hate. But I was just like, he caught me off guard asking me that shit. Cause like he looked, he looked like he didn't want me to say he. I knew he was black. Like he looked. And honestly, I was trying to get that job. I'm like, all right, nigga, you don't want to be black on the phone. You don't want to be black on the phone. Like that's how, that's you, boss man. That's fucked up. But that's how you're living. And so, it was him and this other black dude, they was always kicking it or whatever, and he was just telling me that one bitch just, like, stopped coming to work or whatever. And in retrospect, I feel like this nigga's lying, because that whole situation was crazy, too. Like, ooh, where's the charger? Charger! Do you see it? I think it's, like, right. I think I'm laying on it, honestly. Yeah, I was definitely. Thank you. Um... But the situation with the with that whole ah, that whole situation was I was working under the table at this coffee shop. <clears throat> I was getting paid straight cash. The shit was bomb. But um I don't know where my boss started talking about he wanted to do checks and wanna keep a, a week behind and I'm like, dude, like I was like, you can't really do that. Like you can't really just tell me out of nowhere that like you gotta keep a check of mine for a week. Like, that's crazy. Um and so I was kind of in a position where I, you know, I was kind of like, fuck, all right, like, that's going to fuck me up. I had to go tell my roommate. So I'm telling my roommates, right, I'm just like, look, I was like, I can't afford to give y'all $50 this week because it was a situation where I was like giving them $50, each other person of $50, if that makes sense, $100 to each person, but 50 each. It alternated, like one week I would give her 50, one week I would give him 50, and it equaled out to they each got $100 off their rent for me living downstairs in their living room. That's what the situation was. So, um, she was on some shit like, 
ah, uh, like, that fucks me up, like, just getting all OD, and I'm like, well, bitch, there's nothing I can do about that, you know what I mean, it's kind of like, how are you gonna pop off on me, like, I'm, like, it's like, take it to a journal, you know what I mean, because I can't really tell you anything about this, like, this is a shady situation, I don't fucking know, and so I was teaching her at my job, like, how to, like, make all these coffees or whatever the fuck, and so she's, like, getting all this information, and she's trying to like, get an interview with my boss, and I put it in for her, but then he, like, never, like, tries to check in with her, and so he like pretty much tells me that like he's not sure like all this shit and I'm like whatever and like she's telling me that he's telling her that like God will tell him when it's the right time and very Christian oriented like this nigga had like a bible and shit at the coffee shop and I was just kind of like why girl but whatever so he was on some shit where he interviewed her and there was on some shit like I should have he's like I should fire you and hire her and I started laughing in his face cause I was just like well like if that's where you're at like what am I gonna do you know what I mean it's like I don't feel like I'm gonna pop off on you right then and there but it's like once he said some shit like that that's why I made sure to take some extra caramel home with me take all the fucking uh Cheetos that I could fit into my backpack all the drinks that I wanted, all the coffees that my friends wanted, I was like, well, nigga, if you're talking about firing me hypothetically and hiring this bitch that I live with, then, like, I don't know, man, like, the dog days are not over, <laughs> like, sorry, Florence, and all your machines, but, like, I'm, I refuse, so I was, like, out here just going hard in the paint, not to mention the fact that, like, the second, the second coffee shop I worked at was in a courthouse, and, like, it, like, Colorado is wild, like, I don't know. I've seen a lot of wild shit. The police just be cruising, just be working. And, like, the thing is, like, I don't know, in certain parts of Denver, it's like, or rather certain parts of Colorado, it's like, why the fuck are the police out here? <laughs> like, it just don't make no sense. Ain't nobody out here. Like, it's just wild. And they'll just be out, like, lurking, just gooning, riding slow. It's just very scary. Um, it's just like nothing happens out there. It's just, like, kind of strange to see police presence, like, the way that I see it. But when I was working at the coffee shop in the courthouse, I noticed that, like, a lot of people would get out of jail, which was, like, next door. Like, there was, like, a prison next door. I didn't even know that shit. Um, but people would get out the prison and come to the courthouse and get some food out the coffee shop. And they would be on some shit, like, this is, like, the only money they have. Like, this is the money they went into jail with, I guess. And they, that's the money that they had out of their pocket whenever the fuck they went in that bitch. So I was on some shit like, well, damn, like, have it all, bitch. You know what I mean? That's just me. I was just like, look, take this sandwich, take this salad. You know what I mean? Take this fucking, <laughs> take this Red Bull. I don't give a fuck. Like, get the hell. Like, that's crazy. So, um, I was just, like, I, I was just in a position where I was just, like, not really feeling it to be living, um, and that's like I was already like musing about going back to New Orleans. Like by the time I had that job, I was like, I just need to get a couple more paychecks from these from this motherfucker, and like I'm gonna go get me a fucking plane ticket because I can't really be in this motherfucker no more. Because I was just kind of done, um, and I was just feeling like shit was just kind of scraggly and lack the fuck luster. Um, and so what happened was I told her straight up. I was like, yo, I was like, if he offers you my job and you take it. I don't fuck with you like I said that straight up and she was like well she was just like honestly she was like I just got fired from one of my jobs and like I only have one job right now and that's not enough money and like it's not like you need this job like you know that I'm not gonna like trip on you about money like you know that like I don't care like you know that like you don't have to like worry about like paying me right away and all this shit and I'm just like dude I was like um, I was like, I have other bills in life to pay for. I am not trying to make you feel better about rationalizing, like, taking a job offered to you by a, a sh obviously shady-ass person. Like, I was like, I was like, if he doesn't fire me before he hires you, I was like, I don't fuck with you. And if you take this job, period, I don't fuck with you. Like, I was just, like, on some shit like that. Like, I was like, I don't know what else to say. Like, this is just crazy. Because, like, the job was, like, like, the job was allowing me to, like, really, like, do a lot of things like I was like making some good ass money like people really fucked with me like I was getting some good tips like people were loving me and so I was kind of just like word like I was like what is going on and so as I told you this nigga randomly wants to take a week of my pay and talk about he gonna have to save it so that he can give me a check in a week and so I get 
like I get the first the first check that I ever get from him is delivered literally five minutes. Where's the thing? I'm silly. Um, it's literally delivered like five minutes before I'm trying to leave for the day. So I don't work the whole day at work, and I'm just like, where is my money? And so then this like random ass like young ass black lady just gonna run up on me and talk about some. Hey girl, here you go. And it was short, like thirty something dollars. And I was like, oh bitch, no. So I called this nigga. <coughs> and I let him know how I was feeling about that. I was like, girl, I was like, my check is short. And he was like, how much? And I told him, I'm like, $36. And he was like, damn. He was like, well, take it out the drawer. And I was like, but if I could just take money out the drawer, why are you giving me checks now, bitch? What is this? So I was getting mad. So then... Um, what should we call it? Fucking. I was waiting for. I was waiting, and then he told me that week, like, oh, you're not gonna get a check this week. Like, you're gonna get a check next week. So I'm like, I just waited a week to get this check, and now you're telling me I gotta wait another week. And then I can't get the check for another week. It was talk with some bi-weekly. And I was like, bitch, what the fuck? So I was like, okay. So two weeks, no money. And I'm kind of just like, bruh. And so I remember like the last, the day I was supposed to get my check, I called him earlier in the day, like at like 11. And I was like, yo, I was like, I'm going to close up the shop at like one. I was like, but I'm just trying to figure out like how I'm getting my check. And he's just like, I'll call you back later. I'm like, okay. He does not call me back. So I'm calling him and he's just like not really trying to figure shit out with me. Meanwhile, like in Denver, I had it hooked up. Like I had my, my drug dealer in Denver. He was like this cool ass dude. Um, I cannot remember his name. I feel kind of awkward about that. Hmm. I don't think I was supposed to remember his name. <laughs> Anyways, uh, he was like, he was a chill ass dude. Like, he would give me rides and shit for like $5. Like, he would give me a ride like random places for $5. And I'd be like, weird. Um, but he was like giving me a ride home because I told him, I was like, bro, I was like, they playing with my check. I was like, you give me a ride home, please. I was like, I do not want to wait on the bus. And he was like, definitely. So then he gave me a ride back um, to my house. And the whole time I'm in the car, I'm calling my, my fucking boss like, bitch, where's my check though? Because I was like, I was waiting for that for that beautiful ass, young ass black lady to just pop up with her sketchers and be like, girl, here's your check. You know what I mean? That never happened. That never happened. So... I'm just like, I'm um, trying to get my money. And then this thing is going to say some shit like, you're going to get your check when I when I give you your check and all this shit. And I was like, what? I was like, dude, I was like, this is not legal. Like, you're not allowed to be telling me this. And he was like, how dare you question me and talk back to me when I'm trying to be a blessing in your life? I was like, how am I being blessed by not knowing when I'm getting paid? And then he got mad as fuck. And I'm like, why are people mad? Why are people, I'm like, why is he mad at me right now for saying the truth? But, whatever. So, anyways, from there, she only got worse. So, I'm, like, texting him, like, can I please get my check? And then he starts texting me, telling me that my check is available at this random ass address. And so, I call him, because I'm just like, this sounds crazy. Because I was like, here I am getting a ride back to my house, and I didn't... I lived like maybe like three miles from my job, but it was like three miles, like one long ass strip of like highway, like highway slash main road. So it's like, maybe it was five miles, honestly. I think I lived five miles away from my job. It was like five miles on the bus. It was like a fucking 30 minute bus ride, honestly. But it's like once you're downtown, you're downtown, you know? I don't know. It just didn't seem absurd uh, at the time. <laughs> but um, that's because like buses are just so reliable in Denver, I feel like. But um, anyways. So, I'm, like, halfway, like, to my house, and he's, like, trying to give me an address to, like, downtown, and I'm kind of just, like, what? Like, I was, like, girl, like, how you gonna have me going downtown again? Like, I'm already in the burbs. Like, how you gonna have me going downtown when I'm in the fucking burbs? Like, I just got to the fucking burbs. So, I was kind of mad. And so, then, then, the situation became that he's sending me texts talking about some bitch you are no longer an employee with coffee etc and I'm just like I was like 
I was saying, I literally like was like, I don't care where my money though. Like that's all I was saying. I was like, I don't care that I'm not employed anymore. I just want to get my fucking paycheck, bitch. You owe me two weeks of pay, bitch. Pay up. Like I just worked two weeks for your ass with no money. You owe me so much money right now, <laughs> bitch. Just fucking pay me. This little fucking ugly ass bitch gonna fucking tell me some shit. Like now that you're terminated, like we can take up the two weeks to give you your paycheck and za 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 and ja ja fucking the bore. And I was just like, like, what is the point? What is the point of life? Like what? Like what can happen? So then I tried to call like the fucking Better Business Bureau. These niggas trying to get me to run around. It was like the oldest, most southernest, most fucking whitest, most fucking crotchetiest, most fucking wildest, most fucking crash bandicoot ass motherfucking bitch on the phone. Old ass fucking southern ass white dude trying to tell me, well, I can't really help you because this is not where you go to file a claim. You need to go online. I'm like, if I can do this online. What is the point of y'all having a fucking hotline? I'm trying to get a fucking... I, I was like, I'm trying to get some fucking information. I'm terrible at customer service. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm fucking horrible. Because I'm just like, I just want this information. Like, I just want to know this certain thing. I'll leave you the fuck alone. Like, I don't want to be on the phone with you. Like, I don't want to talk to you, man, mom. Like, oh my god. Like, let me get off the phone with you. Like, I don't fuck with you like that. So, anyways, I was just kind of bugging and tripping. Because, like, nobody cared that, like, this nigga was, like, playing the fuck out of me and my paycheck. And so... <clears throat> tell me why tell me why I like so I get home finally and I'm just kind of like life is crazy and I let I let a day pass and I call my boss and he's not trying to answer his phone and then when I finally get him to answer his phone he puts his wife on the phone because he tells me that it's better that I talk to a woman because I don't know how to speak to a man. And I was like, I don't know how to speak to a man. I was like, that is fucking disgusting. Like, I wanted to fucking strangle this nigga. So I was kind of just like, OD angry at that point. And when his wife got on the phone, I was like, bitch, your new black ass is about to get it. Like, I'm not even playing with you. And she's on some shit like, um, she was like, uh, you know, she's like talking on her angry like that like, you know, things just didn't work out. Um, but, you know, we're under Colorado law that states we have a timeline to follow with paying you back. And your check is going through processing now that you are no longer uh, working with our company. And I was just like, okay, but, like, what about the check that y'all already owed me? Like, if y'all were deciding to fire me before payday, then this might have worked out for y'all maybe. But not really. Like, payday is Friday, bitch. It's Friday. Like, or rather, it was, at that point, it was Sunday. So, it was like, y'all have owed me money for two days now. Like, y'all fired me on payday. You are still supposed to pay me. Like, that's not how shit works. And so, the situation was on, was then that like I was just crying and I was just like irked as fuck and like the whole time my roommate was on some shit like you know she just like following me around like while I was on the phone like going going in and in retrospect I'm kind of like a bitch why was you near me but it's like I was kind of just not feeling her presence near me I was kind of just like let me be mad about this like let me cry about this like this is really fucked up like i'm stuck here like i like i was just trying to be like what does it look like me getting another job and living here like i hate this place like i was like i hate living with this dude who like barely fucking is here like this nigga would just go to fucking uh vegas for like a fucking week bro we didn't see i thought that nigga died like one time i was like yo where that nigga go i remember i like i like hooked up with like a couple people and it was some shit where like Folks were like, who lives in this room? Like, what's what's here? And I'm like, I don't even know. Like, maybe a ghost. Like, I was like, I haven't seen the nigga who lives here in so long. I don't know. We started using that shit as a living room, my nigga. We started using that nigga room as a living room, bitch. That's how you know you're not home. Niggas just started, like, living in your shit. <laughs> so, anyways. Um, fucking. A couple days. Or rather, not even a couple days. That day that I had my breakdown about not getting paid. I was kind of just like OD crying, OD sad, and like me and her got into a fight because I was tell like she was trying to center herself, like she was trying to be like, like trying to tell me that I was being like rude to her or something, or I was hurting her feelings or some shit by like telling her to leave me alone when I was like going through something that I felt like was extremely fucking traumatic, honestly. Like I was kind of like, yo, like waiting on like a couple hundred dollars like i was waiting on like almost like fucking 500 fucking dollars like it's kind of like why the fuck 
like that's a lot of money and like for someone who's poor like that's a lot of money that's like obviously going to bills and like shit that you need like when like poor folks get mad money like we're going hard like we're gonna buy all of our wants all of our needs like we're trying to just hook it up you know trying to live so it was just crazy um and so I was just kind of like how dare you like trying to swindle me bitch and so um her and I got into a beef and I went to my next door neighbor's house and she gonna text me at my next door while I'm at my next door neighbor's house talking about we need to talk and I was like I really don't want to talk to you right now because like she was just like shutting me down like making me feel like I was overreacting on some and again saying some shit like you know it doesn't matter if you're fired you know like I'm not gonna trip on you about rent like I don't care and I was like yo but like I was like I need money to live like it's not about just paying you rent like just not even thinking about what the fuck she's saying like just telling me that it doesn't matter that I'm like I don't have a job like out of nowhere like what the fuck I was just like hell no so then like um when I was at my neighbor's house she starts texting me telling me that like we need to talk and I was like I don't want to talk to you and then she started telling me well I don't think that we should live together anymore and I'm just like bitch I don't and like the whole time I had been saying I'm trying to go back to New Orleans for my birthday which is December 26th and this was in October I was saying this shit in October I told her um but it wasn't until November that I was fucking fired in the middle of trying to like just pay her off like for like rent for the rest of like the time I was gonna be there and get my fucking plane ticket and be the fuck out and so when she texted me that I'm just sitting there like but bitch I'm trying to leave like I don't want to live with you either bitch like I was just sitting there like just dumbfounded because I was just like how could you like text me that you don't want to live with me when I've been telling you like I've been telling you that I don't want to fucking live with you anymore and that I want to go back to New Orleans like she kept trying to get me to fucking stay in Denver and I kept being like yeah no like she kept coming up with all these like ideas all these setups for how we can live together and I'm just like I'm going back to New Orleans like she would just come up with all different like, harebrained schemes and I'd be like no you know what I mean like she wants some shit like oh my god like imagine if I got an apartment and it was like a studio and like a loft and I was like that'd be cool but then I'll always follow up and be like I would never not live or rather I would never live in Colorado full time though like I don't see myself I don't like Colorado so much that I'll live there forever like that's not that's not how I feel so from from there though the situation kind of got kind of whack though I'll say this cause like um days later after that text like I noticed that this bitch started waking up at the hours that I used to wake up for my job and I started noticing that this bitch was smelling like coffee and then I asked her one day like I don't know like she asked me for a blunt wrap and I we were not smoking together at this point like our weed strategy was not together like I was getting my own weed she was getting her own weed and at the time like Shout out to my friend Timothy. Like, this nigga knew, like, I was jobless. I had no fucking money for food. I didn't want to ask my friends who had helped me come out to Denver for anything. Because I was like, y'all had, like, y'all have helped me so much. Like, I do not want to be asking y'all for shit. Um, but they would, they would still help me out. Like, <coughs> like there were times where, like, Samantha would be like, yo, come get dinner at my house. Or, like, come, come kick it, you know. Or I would just kick it, like, anyways. And I would just, like, hang out with their, like, their baby. Like, we would chill, kick it. And, like, I would just, like, help out, you know. Do, do whatever I could, you know. And so, um, it's just, uh, it was just, like, a bomb thing to have that network. But the reality is, like, I can't always be at somebody else's house for dinner. You know what I mean? So, like, there would be times where, like, I needed money and, like, my friend Timothy was sending me money. But in my mind, I was, like, like, before I knew that, like, she had, like, taken this job, I was, like, I will pay her when I can get the money. But then, like, once she got the job, I was like, bitch, you have two jobs now. Like, you work for your parents, and you get mad money and, like, steal mad quarters from them from their laundry mat. So I'm kind of just like, girl, like, you're rich. Like, this bitch will go to Coinstar with OD quarters from her fucking family's laundry mat. I'd be like, bitch, those are purple quarters. Like, her family will paint the quarters purple so they could know what quarters are theirs. And I would overhear at the time when I would kick it at her job, people talking about quarters missing. I would see mad quarters coming out of her fucking bag when she was at Coinstar. <coughs> this bitch would have, like, $100 in Coinstar every, like, couple weeks. So I'll be like, all right, bitch, live your life. You know what I mean? But, like, when she when she took my job and talked about something, she needed it. I'm like, bitch, you don't need it. Like, you're living better than me, bitch. And I'm living, like, downstairs from you, and I'm paying you fucking rent. Like, you're living way better than me. Like, get the fuck out of here. 
Um, and so there was that whole situation. But then um, she was trying to bug on me because, like, once like I found out that she was working at my job, like I went into like a severe depression because I was just kind of like, what did the whole last couple of months like? What like chilling with you even mean? Like what was the point of this i was like why like why is it that like you're like and it's like the job wasn't the blessing but it's just the fact that the matter was this person didn't pay me this person fired me with no pay and fucking gave her a job and she's over here like just feeling good in her pussy like just out here just living carefree Meanwhile, I'm over here bugging. Meanwhile, motherfucking the other dude that we live with is talking about I owe him fucking money and he's mad. And then the climate starts getting fucked up in the house when I'm smoking weed and I'm eating food. And niggas feeling like I shouldn't be doing those things if I can't pay them fucking $200 to live there. And I'm like, well, bitch. Um, and she and when we finally had the conversation about her texting me that I should like that we don't we shouldn't live together or whatever. I was like, yo, I was like, you know I've been trying to leave. Like, I'm not trying to live here. And she's like, yeah, but she's like, I think, like, you need to find another place to leave. Like, I think sooner than perhaps you were thinking. Um, because, honestly, like, I'm just not liking how, like, we're having conversations. Because, like, she told me, she's like, I don't want it to be like you and him. Like, talking about me and my other roommate, how we don't talk to each other. And I was like, I was like, look, I was like, I'm not trying to be fake with you. But I don't really fuck with you like that. Like, I don't really fuck with you. I don't know what you want from me. Like... I can't pretend like we're cool because I feel like you're shady as fuck. And I can't pretend like I fuck with you right now. Like, I cannot pretend for you. And that really hurt her feelings that I wouldn't pretend because she was willing to pretend. I meet a lot of people like that that are willing to pretend with me that they will we fuck with each other so they can feel comfortable. And I, like, refuse because I'm like, I'm like, nah, like... I was giving you the real me when we were fucking with each other like when we fucked with each other it was me for real and like when you started playing games like and doing sneaky ass shit like having phone conversations with my boss about like my performance or whatever the fuck like she ends up telling me all this shit like trying to like make me feel better talking about well he called me and told me that you always smelled like weed and like that wasn't good for the customers and I was like weed is legal in fucking Colorado like yes I smell like weed <laughs> like everybody smells like weed oh my god like I was like really and it's like no shade though can you really smell weed over coffee bitch like I just I smelled like espresso every day I never smelled like weed I smelled like weed when I first got to work cause I took a 30 minute fucking bus to work bitch I'm definitely gonna be high on that bitch I'm riding them with fucking 14 year old bitches asking me what school I go to I'm like nah mm mm Nope. I seen, you know what, shout out to all the bitches that didn't get jumped on the 15th fucking L. Because that's crazy. Like, Denver, Denver was wild. I seen some wild shit. I seen a nigga snatch a bike off a fucking bus. And I was like, shit is real. I was like, if you didn't know, niggas, shit is real. Nigga just stole a, a bike off the bus and the bus driver didn't even care. He just kept driving. <laughs> I was like, yo, shit, is, they is not playing. But anyways, once... Okay, so then, so then her and him tried to bug on me because they was mad about seeing that I was eating some motherfucking, uh, they was mad because I ate some churros or some shit. They seen the churro box. And I was like, it's three ninety five. I was like, I could afford to treat myself to a fucking Mexican dessert? That's what you're going to gauge on my, my ability to pay y'all fucking $200 right now? As like, it's not really in my budget. I was like, trying to explain to them. I was like, I can't really pay you right now. I'm trying to figure out, like, how the fuck to get out of this state. Like, I was, and, like, because she told me, too, when we were having that conversation, she's like, well, I wanted to tell you before you got another job. So she was on some shit. Like, she didn't want me to find another job in her fucking apartment. Like, she decided out of nowhere, like, I don't want you to find another job here. Like, I want you to move out as soon as possible. So I was just on some shit. I was like, listen, I was like, let's come up with a date. But I'm going to move out. Bye. So that you can feel good about this meeting, and I can feel good. And she's like, "Okay." So we made a a com we made a situ or rather we came up with a solution. But like a lot of sh shit happened in the interim because like I said, November 29th would be like the absolute last day I would be in in the apartment or in Colorado. Period. And we made it to like November, like. 21st I want to say maybe I'm not really fucking sure 
but a lot of things transpired in the interim there was like this trans person who I met who was super like upholding patriarchy and like freaking me the fuck out like just like freaking me out so bad and I just wasn't really fucking with them and they were just like always like flirting with me and shit and flirting with like my roommate and I just feel like they were trying to do like like create some sort of competitive competitiveness that was already fucking there anyways and I just did not fuck with it like I felt like in ways the competitiveness really like just killed me like it just had me like not mm -mm, no vibe uh so I was kind of on some shit where I really wasn't you know I really wasn't trying to fuck with this person outside of like if I was with my roommate at her <coughs> job or some shit and they pop by or some shit so out of nowhere like I like um I was posting about how you know I'm just like dealing with anti-blackness in my home space and stuff and my roommate didn't know that because I like had blocked her from seeing any of my statuses because I was like I'm not gonna be silenced like I will I will block you before I fucking silence myself like on some shit that's like affecting me and like folks who are trying to reach out to me but her friends were like reaching out to her being like Tatiana saying this and this and this on Facebook and she was feeling all types of ways like randomly like we were literally like on a bus going I can't remember where but like it was like I think we were leaving like so I don't I can't remember we were on a bus going I think like leaving for and going back to Denver and like one of her friends had hit her up and told her that I had like said that like she was being like like just like you know anti-black as fuck and like she was mad about it and I was just like yo like that's how I was feeling you know and I was trying to chill with her and like not be letting that like not let everything fuck with me but I was like y'all don't fuck with you for real and so the end of days pretty much ended like not yet but thank you the end of days with us pretty much ended were like you know as I said she was getting upset that I wouldn't be fake with her and I was on some shit where like I didn't give a fuck and I had like these two fuck buddies that were like they were like always like tricking on me and like being really sweet to me and shit and like the thing is I'm a sharing asshole like that's how I am so it's like when niggas would trick on me I would try to invite her to get tricked on too like I'd be like come on girl come get this come you know come enjoy you know come sample come you know come live cause like one of the dudes I fucked with worked at a dispensary so he got all types of crazy shit um with him and he would come he would come see me so I'd be like bitch come get some of this candy some come get some of this soda get high as fuck you know what I mean let's enjoy let's live you know what I mean spread love that's what a real mob do and so I feel like she was feeling it but then like once we was not cool no more I wasn't inviting her to kick it with me and my homies and she was feeling some type of way like she was over here like we was not vibing and she's like gonna walk by me and my homie gonna talk about some Oh, I don't really want to kick it. I'm going to go to bed. I'm not really feeling well. Trying to make it seem like anyone invited her to kick it. And I'm like, okay, well, live your life. And then so then randomly, she was, one day she was just like, I don't want, you know, Trey coming over here anymore. And I was like, okay. And it was on some shit where she was feeling like, you haven't paid us any money. And, da -da -da. and I was like, Audrey, I was like, you have two jobs, bitch. I was like, you have two fucking jobs right now. Like, you make way more money than me. You do not need $100 of my fucking money. You just took my fucking job, bitch. You're getting paid well. I know how much you make. You're Gucci. Like, you could pay. Like, you're good. You could pay your rent before I moved in. You could pay your rent now. Like, I'm not hurting you. Like, you're okay. And, like, just trying to come up with all types of petty shit. You know how people try to tell you you run up their light bill and shit when, you know, they just want to just come up with something. So, I was just like, whatever, girl. Like, live your life. Um... And so, anyways, like, she decided, like, to pop off on me, like, and, or whatever. I'm just being, like, you can't have nobody over the house anymore. And tried to fight me. And it was on some bad girls club shit. And I feel like some of these folks out here be watching too much reality TV. Because I think, like, she thought that by, like, body checking me, I was going to just pop off on her. But the thing is, I'm an educated ass nigga. 
and I'm not about to fight no bitch who's assimilating so hard into white culture that when she calls the fucking police, which she did, and she lies on me, which she did, they're gonna come and treat me like I ain't nobody and I'm a fucking dusty ass nigga and da 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 and I ain't got no rights in my fucking house and all this shit. Like, I, nigga, I had a lease that we both signed and these niggas gonna tell me I can't fucking have nobody at the house because it's her fucking apartment. I'm like, if I can live here because there's a lease, then I get to fucking have rights like I'm on the fucking lease. So it's like, get the fuck out of here. And so... And, like, the police are trying to tr treat me like I'm being obnoxious just for knowing my fucking rights. Like, it was just so fucking invalidating. I was just like, wow, bitch. Like, you called the police on me? And she called the police on me after body checking me and then throwing a bunch of my shit against a window and breaking her own fucking window. And I didn't realize the window was broke till the second day. And I, like, slept there overnight. And they had, like, broken and or turned off the fucking thermostat so I could get no heat downstairs. And it was November. And it was actually quite fucking cold in Colorado in November, it was a very fucking cold, I remember like not being able to get warm like all night, and the next day, I remember coming home, and one of my blankets was like thrown like 20 feet away from my bed, near the washing machine, when niggas was trying to tell me, it's so-and-so's blanket, the nigga that ain't never here, who's always in motherfucking, uh, Las Vegas, and, uh, she's about to wash it for him, but I can't use it no more, and I'm like, okay, and then I started looking over near my window, and I'm noticing the window shaking, and, and quaking and moving, and I'm just like, why is the window looking like this? I'm not really understanding, and I'm just looking, and next thing I know, I notice that the window's broken that this bitch actually like cracked this window and the thing is um when the people came in when you know her her ex-girlfriend and his ex-fiance all fucked up the shit and broke all the windows the niggas were saying it was gonna be like fifteen hundred dollars just to fix the big ass one and that one was smaller but it's still like a, like it was like a window slash wall like that like was preventing animals from coming inside and it was winter time and like as I said, they have broke the thermostat and or turned that shit off. So, it was cold as fucking shit, like, near my bed. Like, my bed was, like, right next to the window, and it was cracked the fuck open. And I was like, wow. Like, an animal could have came in and fucking bit off my fucking face. And I'm just like, here I am, <laughs> you know? And I'm just like, damn, I'm over here sleeping in, like, crazy conditions right now. So, I, like, went upstairs, and I was like, Audrey, I was like, remember when you threw my things? <laughs> And that's what made her mad the the night that she threw on my shit. Um, Cause like, she was just on some shit where she was trying to talk to me. And like, I was about to get some dick. So I was kind of just like, Tuh! you know what I mean? Get the fuck back, bitch. So I was kind of just feeling real fucking grown in my pussy and in my ways. And I was kind of just like, let that bitch fucking say some shit to me. I'm about to laugh at her ass. And she started trying to talk shit about me. And I was like, nigga, shut up. I was like, you about to live with this shady ass nigga when I leave. I was like, the nigga that don't pay the fucking energy bill, even though you be giving him all your fucking coins. And I was just popping the fuck off. I was saying everything for every fucking body. I was just like, let's clear the air. So, um, you know, I'm trotting around the fucking, uh, around my room, slash living room, slash stairwell, slash motherfucking hallway, and I'm just like, ah. I was just like, anyways, like, I was just hating, or rather, I was just, like, counteracting the hate, because she was trying to, like, she was trying to go in on me and be on some shit, like, you know, like, like, you know, um, oh, this is what it was. She was trying to tell me that I had to move all my stuff out of the bathroom downstairs. We had two bathrooms. She's like, you have to move all your stuff out of the downstairs bathroom because you don't pay any rent. And I was just like, okay. And I was just laughing the fuck. I was just like, what does that mean? Like, I have to move all my stuff out of the fucking bathroom. And I was just like, I'm not going to do that. I was like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. I was like, y'all use the bathroom upstairs. Y'all literally share a bathroom between your bedrooms. Like, the downstairs bathroom is my bathroom. That was, like, that, that's what it's been. Like, let's stop playing games. And so then she started moving all my stuff out of, all my stuff out of the bathroom. And I was just like, Audrey, I'm just going to put it back. Live your life, bitch. Live your life. And so she's just, like, going crazy at that point because, like, she knows, like, she's just moving all this shit out of there and looking dumb as fuck because I'm just, like, unfazed. You know, I'm giving her unbothered realness and, like, that's irking her. And that's one of the things, like, I was just like, girl, like, I told you this early in our friendship. I was like, honestly, like, I learned our fighting style and I was like, honestly, it's really fucked up and we should really work on it because it just really, it was just a bunch of 
just manipulative tactics, you know what I mean? Seemingly, like, uncaring, but, like, obviously caring. Like, caring about, like, how that person was, like, treating you and wanting to not be treated that way and, like, obviously not having space to say those things because, like, you're being manipulated in this moment and therefore you're gonna just, like, fucking attack, 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 attack because somebody's playing with you, playing games. So, anyways, uh... She was just getting more and more irked because I was just, I was, hmm, I was calling her softly because that bitch was just getting mad. I was just telling her all of her business. I was like, girl, I was like, you're out here trying to control people and like, it's not going to work. I was like, and I feel bad for you, honestly. And she was like, I feel bad for you. She's like, you try to pretend like you're happy, but you're so insecure. She's like, everybody sees how insecure you are. Everybody knows. And I was just like. Who's everybody? I was like, why do you talk like you're in a fucking 90s fucking drama? Like, everybody fucking knows you're insecure. It's like, what does that even mean? What am I insecure about? Like, I'm not, like, what? Like, I was just not even sure. Like, I feel like she had just, like, decided that that was, like, the mean girl thing that she was going to say, like, for any time anyone ever fucking, like, uh challenge her or say something fucked up to her like make her feel fucking shitty and like the thing is like all I had to do to call to pull her card was say the one thing like she was on some shit like you know she's like well she's like I feel bad for you because at least I'm happy and I was like you're really not happy though and that shit made her so angry and it's like something in retrospect I realized I should have never said but it's one of those things where like you can't go back like once you tell a bitch that she's not happy with her life that bitch ain't gonna fuck with you like that and that's the thing that's like after I said that I was like bitch I can't be your friend now you know you know that I know that you're not fucking happy with your life and you're just like coming at me as like a fucking way of not having to fucking deal with your own shit so like what are you gonna do you're either gonna fucking understand where I'm coming from and work on your fucking shit or what she did just fucking try to attack me and try to make me feel like I'm fucking crazy and I'm just like girl no like I'm not I'm not crazy at all like I'm just calling it like the fuck I see it and so, and like, again, the politics, you know what I mean? This is like a, this is a dark skinned like, queer person who's steady taking up for, like, this, like, white passing ass dude who just, like, is so shitty. And me and her, like, we just, like, could not be friends after that shit. But, like, when she called the police on me, I just realized the gravity of the situation. Like, I spent the night, like, at my friend's house and... I was really thankful that I had that place to go to because I was, like, really, like, freaking out about, like, sleeping next to, like, a broken-ass window after the police came. But it was just, like, a fucking fucked-up-ass experience, honestly, because I was just, like, whoa. Like, the, I, like, honestly, like, I was taking a shit when the police, like, got, were into my, were in my house. And, like, I just didn't expect that. Like, I thought I would hear them come to the front door. And they came through, like, the, the side door. Um, and she had let them in and like her comfort like with the police and like as they were leaving like her getting like the card of the police that like fucking harassed me verbally and I'm and just being like um him just being like call me if anything else happens like her just feeling like solidarity with authority over me like just had me feeling crazy as fuck I was like bitch you're evil like I don't even know if I could fuck with you in the afterlife like if I see you near me in the spiritual realm like I'm gonna bite the shit out of you bitch like I'm gonna do something I'm gonna use some sort of fucking like rock skipping technique on your fucking face cause that's fucking fucked up but like I don't know. I just, like, didn't expect her to ever, like, call the police and lie on me and shit. That was crazy. She tried to tell the police that I, like, attacked her. I was like, bitch, what? And, like, the whole time she was body checking me, I was like, I was like, yo, Audrey, I was like, this is a bad girls club, girl. I was like, I'm not gonna fucking fight you right now. Like, there's no point in me fighting you, because the reality is, like, your parents are assimilated as fuck. Your mom told you that she would never be with a black man, but she's dating a white passing ass black man, and she's comfortable saying, like, anti-black shit like that with her brown skin ass self. I don't know what the fuck is in the water, but I couldn't fuck with it. Like, honestly, like, niggas was treating me like I was an oddity because I was, like, not fucking with anti-blackness. Like, I was getting treated, like, poorly, because I was, I was, like, just living my fucking will, my, living my truth. I was living my truth. Truth, Ayama. Is it Iyama? Iyama? Thank you, baby. But Iyama. 
you know, I was just like, I'm going to live my truth, you know. But I, I will say this, one of the best moments of living in Denver, and there were a couple good moments, but one of my favorite moments was when I was on the bus, the black lady said that she liked my hair, and I said thank you, and I said white people be touching it though, and then me and her had a whole dialogue, loud as fuck, on the fucking bus to Aurora for fucking 40 minutes about fucking black hair, and white people wilding, and like, uh, new black niggas, uh, respectable negroes, all the corporate... Uh, fake niggas that like we encounter who be trying to act like white folk whenever they see black folk so that uh, white folk don't you know get them confused and like we were just like going in and it was intergenerational she was older than me I'm not gonna speculate on her age but she was definitely an elder and I was kind of like yes god but it's like what does it take to have more of those conversations you know what I mean I was just willing to but the thing is tonight when I went over to Sydney aunt house honestly she was also saying stuff like how people ask her how she is and she'll be like I'm okay and now she's gonna be saying that she blessed and shit but the reality is you know she said one time someone asked her how she was doing at the grocery store and she said she's okay then she said actually I'm not okay and then she said that she said some shit to this lady and this lady said some shit like her said some shit back to her and they both with their carts walking around the grocery store telling each other all this fucking tea about their life and shit and I'm just like that's real as fuck like it literally takes you saying what's really happening in your life for you to really fucking open up you know sometimes you know being real with yourself like I, but I feel like until you're being real with yourself you're not gonna tell nobody about that shit but when you're being real with yourself and you're like you know what I'm not gonna let this moment slide like I'm not gonna say I'm okay like if someone if I feel like someone's really there for me and really has the time to, like help me process like I'm gonna do it like I'm gonna tell them like what's really popping but it's hard to do that sometimes because you be feeling like you don't want to people don't want to seem weak or like in need which is sad because like people are it's just like a shitty ass feeling to feel that like it's a double shitty feeling to be in need and then to feel the shame of being in need <laughs> like that's the fucking worst honestly um but uh yeah after I left Denver it was pretty fucking crazy honestly I'm doing another you stream not tonight I'm gonna upload these videos PS but I need to do another you stream before I do like any more videos because like I need I need to talk about like what happened when I came back to motherfucking New Orleans bitch because that shit was fucking crazy like it's crazy right now but that shit is crazier but like let's talk tomorrow for real Ray J Ray J for real um I don't know what my day is like tomorrow because I have to go like do some braids and shit. But like, uh, actually, maybe not tomorrow. Maybe not tomorrow. Maybe Tuesday. Tuesday, because Tuesday I have more time. So Tuesday, um, actually go to marfmello.com. Hit me in the inbox. Let me know what time makes sense for y'all. Cause like I would rather do it like earlier if it would make sense. But I'm Central Time, so if people want to give me a bunch of different times, um just hit me up over there because I would definitely figure it out and like we'll try to do it then unless like midnight one works for y'all because then I can do it then too but like it might be better to do it earlier anyways um <clears throat> I'm gonna dip out because like my fucking back is killing me from sitting in this position so I will upload these videos though by tomorrow for sure like tomorrow these videos will be available both of them um and then I'm gonna do another video on Tuesday I'm not sure what time again <laughs> I'm not sure but in the comments actually in the comments of these videos just let me know what time works for y'all on Tuesday and then we'll come up with a consensus alright so I'm central again central central alright